Before beginning the work on the stake turner, I had to build a stand for my railroad track anvil. It was just too low to the ground. I was bending over too much with the last projects that I made with it. Fortunately, we had some of this 4x12 lumber. I think it was about 36 inches long. Whatever the overall length was, cutting off two pieces to match the height of the railroad track gave me a stand that was exactly the height I needed to do the work without taxing my back, just like a regular blacksmith stand. So I attached the base pieces, or those pieces I cut off, to the uh, base of the stand and uh, bound them in with some pallet bearers. I also toenailed the, uh, screw some screws in because the wood was kind of weak in the middle and would snap. But it turned out to have a nice balance to it, kind of a nice weight. Then I cut two shoulders on either side of the top part of the stand to accept a 2x4. This only goes halfway the depth of the 2x4. I didn't want to take away that much mass from the top of the stand. And it was at this point that I discovered that store brand pole saw that's supposed to look like a Japanese saw had lost some teeth. So I have since purchased a new one. Still using this one for rough work. Then I screwed those uh, two by fours in, and I had set those shoulders so that the two by fours would be slightly proud of the top of the stand, so that I could plane them down. And that's exactly what happened. What I did not plan, but was happy to see, was that I had attached these boards with the grain all running in the same direction, so I could plane them off without any problem. Planing is not a difficult thing when the wood is soft like this. And while I say it's redwood, it's turning up awfully white in the picture, so I'm thinking it might have been hemlock or something like that, because it's certainly not pine. There wasn't enough knottingness and enough stringiness in the grain of the wood to be pine or yellow pine. But it's, uh, it cleaned up very nicely and uh, chamfered the edges to uh, keep them from splitting as I used the object. The other point of having the 2x4s halfway off was to give me a handle if I had to move them. And then before applying the railroad track, I just hit it with some Hellman's interior, exterior, polyurethane spray. Then I set the track in place. I told you that that's a 4x12, so that tells you how small that track surface really is. And it's definitely a soft steel. As I was working on it on another project, I discovered that it would deform as I hit it, and as I was getting ready for this project, I had to grind down the top of that rail. And now begins uh, the process of making the stake turner. I had already made this piece as a practice piece for when I made the herb chopper. It wasn't long enough for anything else, but I certainly could turn this into a stake turner. So I set it up in my little charcoal starter and started making a taper. I started with light hammer marks to try to uh, avoid fish slipping or carp mouthing, as they call it, by hitting lightly on the very edges. But as you see in the image, I was getting fish slipping and carp mouthing. So before I moved uh, any further on this project, I just upset the end there to avoid the fish slipping and then see if I couldn't repair it with another heating. Now, it's a charcoal starter. So it doesn't heat things up very quickly or very hot right off the bat. But if I leave it in long enough, I can start to make progress. And that railroad track, I've told you this before, had a slight slope along one side, uh, sort of like a French curve radius. And I discovered that hitting in line with that curve was the same thing as having a bottom fuller. So I was able to make a taper fairly easily just using the natural shape of the stand. And then to get heat up faster, I decided to use a blowpipe. My mouth is not on the end of that pipe that's been lying in the yard. I don't know where it's been. 
other than that. So my mouth is blowing further away from it, but that helps direct actual air down the tube instead of just my breath. And it takes only a few long puffs to get flames popping out of the, uh, the starter. Which is an advantage to me for not having my face directly against the thing too, because those flames would shoot straight up the pipe and burn my mouth. So a little bit of uh, work getting the coals in place and uh, continuously blowing on it to heat it up. I was able to heat this mild steel into something that I could make a taper out of. Took numerous heats to do so. And not all of my hammer work was flat or even. Fortunately, the longitude of that railroad track is nice and flat and even. And so I was able to uh, straighten things out before I put it back into the heat. I had tried to make the bulk of the taper without working on the tip so that I would not burn the tip. That worked to a degree. Once I got the taper down and started working on the tip, I still ended up burning the very tip. While I was upset with the fact that I have not yet managed to make a taper tip without burning it, I also realized that I could very easily forge past the burn mark, create a taper past that burn mark, and then cut off the burn. And that's what I did, and it ended up working out okay. Here you see me looking and seeing the burn there. So I took it to the grinder cut it off. And once I got to that point, it was time to start forming the first 90 degree bend. At first I thought I needed a light hammer for it, but no. So I grabbed the uh, cross peen hammer and I gave it a 90 degree bend and then flattened everything out and used the side of the anvil as a hook to fully get that bend going. But then I needed to form a second hook and I had this jackhammer point and some clamps. So I just took some wood that I already had that had a channel cut out of it for another project, <laughs> attached it to my vise with the piece of jackhammer uh, point sticking out of it. And that became my beak. That became my, my, <laughs> my horn. And I was able to finally, finally do a decent hook on... <laughs> If you saw my first video, my Trolls Penannular Boots, you know that I had a really big problem forming a hook. So, jackhammer bit and uh, clamps did just fine for doing that. From here, it was refining the hook and then refining the shape of the, the turner in, in its entirety. I even had to give it a bit more of a twist because I formed the hook off-center slightly eccentric to the hook on the back end or the hook on the handle side. So I had to twist it so that that would straighten up. But the rest of this is just neatening up the hook. Here I'm refining the point a little bit. This was at the same time that I was straightening out the slight eccentricity between the tip of the uh, turner and the hook on the handle. I'm getting everything re relatively flat. It's hard to get something perfectly flat on an anvil that is not itself flat. So I had to settle for reasonable flatness. I noticed that you see my feet a lot in this video. It's a good thing I was wearing good shoes. I'm going to have to correct the camera angle in the next video so that whew, you can actually see more of what's going on above the feet than down below. There I was refining the tip just past that burn mark, and then I took it over to the grinder right afterwards. Then I added uh, some texturing to the handle 
in the future when I make one of these, I will, of course, not be making the hook and spiral at the beginning of the process because that made it impossible to get it through and out my charcoal starter with any kind of efficiency. And then I discovered throughout this process that that claw hammer that I've been using has a horrible texture on the surface from hitting nails and other things. But that makes it a perfect texturing tool for blacksmithing. So I uh, used all those imperfections to cover up the imperfections from my clamps and tongs and things like that. And then I hit it with some olive oil to give it that finish, that nice black finish, and there it is. My steak turner, all done. It's still hot there from putting the oil on. I'm letting it cool down in the wind. And though I have a barbecue there, I don't have it assembled in such a way that I can actually start cooking on it, so there's no way I can demonstrate the effectiveness of this turner until I rebuild my barbecue. But for now, that's my barbecue turner and my anvil stand. That's two things in one video. And I will eventually have a video where I show you using this wonderful little tool. And it's so easy to make, I could probably go and make a bunch of more. If you like this video, please hit the like button and comment. Subscribe to my channel to see future videos and updates to my channel. And enjoy these previous videos of mine so that you can see my progress. And as always, thank you for watching.